Hello, welcome to another tech review and I wanted to call this series Tech Review Tuesday but then I thought it's unlikely I'll be able to organise myself to do this just on a Tuesday so you can still call it Tech Review Tuesday but it might be coming out on a different day. Anyway, today I've got this pair of gaming headphones from EXA. These are called the E1000WT Wireless Gaming. You get basically a USB dongle and that connects uh, via 2.4 gigahertz to the headset. You've got a microphone on it and it does surround sound in uh, the headphones. Um, also says it works on PS5, PS4, Xbox One, Xbox Series X or S, Nintendo Switch, PC, or in fact Mac, so I've got plenty to test out. Quick close up, we'll get out of the box, see what's in there, see what we get, and then we'll test it out stuff, see how it performs. Okay, let's get out of the box, see what we get there. Box got a bit squashed in the post, but all contents seem okay. So these are the headphones themselves. They come in this nice bag there, keep them nice and uh, protected when not using them. And if we get it out of the bag, this is what we get. Big squashy uh, ear cups there. You've got the mic that comes down and you've got a bunch of controls on the side. Over here is a USB-C charge port. Then we've got a volume control here. This is for plugging a wire in. They are wireless, but for things that don't support the USB dongle, you can plug them in. And then you've got the two buttons. Uh, one turns it on, which I think is this one. And you get the nice little LED displays, which you can turn off. And once this is on, a short press of this button will turn the surround sound on and off. This one will turn the microphone on and off if you want to, just by pressing it single. So if you long press this button, it turns something called ENC on and off. What ENC attempts to do is isolate your voice on the microphone so the idea is the microphone doesn't pick up any background noise just your voice we should also be able to turn off this light if you're not keen on it by a double tap like that and back on depends if you want your your funky led lights or not let's just turn those off you also get the very important usb dongle the the idea is you plug this in whatever's it plugged into can detect that, use it, and that beams the sound over to this. And 2.4 is pretty good because it seems faster than Bluetooth. You've also got in this bag your regular 3.5 millimeter jacks for plugging in if you need to. And this USB-C charge cable. You've got this user manual here, which I'll be going through and scan that QR code for online documentation. And it's got the basic how to plug stuff in. So what I'm going to do now is I'll have a quick flick through this, test out what all the features do, and then I'll plug it in and test it. Obviously, that's going to be a little bit subjective, because you can't hear what I'm going to hear, but um, hopefully I'll be able to describe it in some way. OK, so let's start off with my Mac here. I've got these powered up, but I haven't plugged it in yet. So if we press play here, and it was very we get my lovely voice talking on the video. So let me plug this in. And then it comes straight over to the headphones without me having to do anything. It's, it basically sees you plug something in and it goes, oh, OK, you want to use the headphones and the microphone. So it assigns that to the current stuff. Yep, sound is clear. There's no delay. That's good. You've got a volume control on the side, which is all good. If I turn the surround sound off, it's a very sort of true sound. It sounds very much like clear. If I turn surround sound on, it's fuller, like it's tried to expand the sound. As far as my Mac goes, there's not actually a way of running surround through headphones. It thinks it's a 2.0 system. So what it's just doing is, is basically, I think, spatially adjusting the sound and say, oh, but this is what it would sound like in surround, like literally the voice coming from every speaker. So it sounds fuller, but not necessarily a true and accurate representation. So let's have a quick look at the microphone and see how that works. So I'm just in Audacity here and I'm recording myself speaking using the microphone. We get a nice level here, although I do notice that the output we're seeing in the window is quite quiet. Let me have a look at that. So I'm just in Audacity here and I'm recording myself speaking using the microphone. We get a nice level. So it's nice and clear. It's not particularly loud. And I did talk to Exa about using this to do voiceovers and they said that's not really intention. We have uh, headsets which have much better mics for doing that sort of thing. So it, it's OK. It's going to be good to use on calls and in gaming. I wouldn't necessarily record stuff on it. That just needs a bit more gain to be useful if I was doing a voiceover or stuff. And of course, 
being on a Mac or in fact a PC, I could use this three and a half millimeter cable instead of using the dongle, but I, I don't really see the point of that. But um, anyway, that's Mac. Let's move on to a different system. What I've got here is my PS4. And in order to work stuff on a PS4 and get surround sound out, it, it's quite tricky. Down here, I've got a quite old Sony 5.1 system and I've got speakers. Uh, that's my left surround, right surround, and I've got my left, mid, right. But I, I go for a complex way of doing this. I'm going HDMI into multiple HDMI switches because I've got a lot of systems. And, and that's not a simple thing in one respect. Every HDMI switch is, is not the same. When you're getting into terms of PS5 and Xbox Series X, and they're doing like 4K up to 120, they're doing HDR, they're doing all this whizzy stuff and speaking HDMI 2.1, you need a, a switch that will support that and actually pass that stuff through. After that point, because this is a gaming monitor and just has HDMI in and no way of getting like optical out and stuff, before it gets there, it goes through an audio extractor, which has to then pull the either the Dolby 5.1 or the DTS out and pass it to my amp. That is not fun. Um, it works though. There's the ambient noise from my PS5. At the moment I'm playing The Witcher. It sounds nice. It's upgraded for the PS5. Um, it's all very good. And again, what happens if I plug this guy in? I'm just going to plug it in the front of the PS5. And by simply plugging in the dongle once again, we're getting the instant sound through these. No no setup or anything necessary. But it will show it on the setup screen if I show you that. So you'll see there's the input device now of our USB XA. We can adjust the microphone level. See this is quite handy because when I'm speaking it's showing me I'm in the good section so my voice is about right and the microphone's about right but you can change the level here quite well. What you can also do on the PS5, if you see here, we can listen to something in stereo and then compare it in 3D audio to see if you can see the difference. And once again, I can hear the difference. The 3D audio definitely sounds more spatial. What they don't do, they don't try and, you know, have something running around behind you and stuff to really pick that up. But yeah, it sounds fuller. Um, I'm going to try a game, see what I can see. Let's have a, a quick go of The Witcher, see how it feels playing and, and see if I can really hear something in 3D. And, and what I'm trying to do to do this is talk to a character and then turn my back on her and see if the sound follows around. And I'm, I'm trying to do it as well, turning the surround sound on and off. And it's certainly a fuller experience when you surround sound on. I can't hear specific things like, oh yes, that's definitely behind me. But um, you certainly notice the difference. Stereo seems a bit flatter and a bit duller in comparison to put it in surround sound. So I think that works quite well. I can't tell you if like there's a specific like, yeah, that's definitely behind me, that's there. I wish there was a test like you'd get on the normal speakers about doing each of the speakers in turn and then see if you can get uh, an idea of how that works, but there isn't one, so we can't. So I'm playing Forza Horizon 5 and in Xbox, you need to plug it in a controller. Xbox Series X and S, the newer, Xbox One, so the Xbox One S, but not the very original. There's some dongle you have to have to plug it in. But this sounds pretty good. You don't have any option. I'm trying to play this through my camera viewfinder. I don't think it's going to work so well. You don't have the option to turn surround on and off because you're playing through a wide speaker instead of like a USB headset. So it's just stereo. Sounds all right, but it's just stereo. So let me find if I can find a game which allows me to use the microphone. These days, ooh. That was a bad smash. These days I don't play many competitive shooters and stuff because I don't like being shouted at by people. Continuity error, yes, the camera ran out of battery and it's now tomorrow, but we're coming back to Xbox. And one interesting thing I noticed about it when just making sure that everything's connected right is if I look at this screen, um, you can get headsets that do Dolby Atmos and DTS. Uh, they generally cost money and even the app cost but you've got this free thing called Windows Sonic which tries to put a surround sound sort of thing into regular stereo headphones so I thought we'd use that. So I took one for the team here and I re-downloaded Halo Infinite multiplayer. I, I played through the campaign I don't as I said I don't really play shooters these days but I thought you know what I'll give it a try.
and we can see our mic's working here. We get this little icon on the screen when we're speaking. So let's see if anybody's playing. It's half past 10 on a Friday morning. So in theory, no one should be here, but I have the feeling there still will be. I have no idea how to play any of the games. I just go around shooting people randomly. Yeah, what's up? I'm okay, I'm just testing out this headset really, see if it works all right. I've captured C. Thank me later. Now we've captured B. We rule. Ooh. Just making sure he's dead. Yay, we won. I was top 50% of that team, which means the team must have been really bad. Okay, that's Xbox done. Microphone works, headphones work, never quite as loud as when you power them and use the surround option. And I didn't really notice the surround even using this uh, Microsoft Windows Sonic thing, but yeah, it worked fine. And it, uh, the headset will perform nicely for gaming. So good stuff. Next up, and last up I guess, is the Switch, which is one of the other platforms the, uh, the headphones mention. Well, here we are on the Switch. We're playing Tears of the Kingdom. Just just got that. And unlike what I found on the Xbox, this is really loud. I had to turn it down. I've still got more volume I could go up there on the actual Switch itself. But yeah, I mean, essentially this works as a regular pair of headphones. Let me take them off a sec. Uh, because that's, that's what you've got there. You've got no specific surround sound abilities through headphones. It sounds pretty full and nice, but nothing surroundy, but yeah, pretty good. Uh, again, anything with a three and a half mil jack, like a Switch, like, you know, most portable consoles, or things like, I suppose, the Steam Deck, uh, a phones, if you've got the adapter, or if you've got that, you can, you can plug it in and, and work as regular headphones. But of course, to get the benefit of that higher spatial thing, the surround sound, it says it does proper 7.1, sound but you you need the right stuff to put out that signal and it's not the same as being in Dolby Digital or DTS or Dolby Atmos it's its own thing so quite how it gets interpreted through various consoles I'm not sure it certainly worked on the PS5 okay then. now if you've got a Windows machine you can download this little uh, customization tool and use it to tune certain things so you can change the way movies will play or FPS games or whatever that says and the standard thing and when you do that and you go ahead and press this button it will go ahead and do front left center front right the two auxiliaries and the two rears and this will give you a much more better indication of how all the surround works and it's pretty good it, it's not the same as having speakers but it's definitely coming from you know not just your left ear but slightly behind as well so that's a good way of tuning things if you need to well there you go that's the exca uh e1000 wt it's a bit of a mouthful to say and they work pretty well i would say what i said before the only reservation i have about surround sound of this case it's not your normal thing it's it doesn't do dolby it doesn't do dts it does its own thing now if, if that's supported in game brilliant you'll get it and i had the feeling that the pc gaming market may be way better for that than sort of console things but you know i get some good sounds in my ps5 um, and the wide stuff is good and you get to use a decent microphone as well plus it's fairly inexpensive as well i mean they're on the website right now for 42.99 which is not bad as these are pretty comfy nice and squishy uh, and just putting them on themselves cancels out quite a bit of background noise. I know while I was wearing this, just filming, my wife got very upset with me because I didn't hear the doorbell ring or the dog barking after it. And I only saw her because she actually came in the room and started waving her arms. So all pretty good. Anyway, there'll be some links down below if you want to check these out. And I hope that's been helpful. I will catch you in the next tech review. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.